Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Photo, episode 28, recorded on October 11th, 2011. Sue Bryce. Twit Photo is brought to you by RingCentral.com. It's the number one cloud based phone system for your business. Start with your 30 day risk free trial at RingCentral.com. And by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All stream directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30 day trial, go to Netflix.com slash Twit. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Twit Photo. This is Alex Lindsay sitting in for Leo, who's on vacation. No, I know you're worried Leo's not here, but Catherine Hall still is. Hey, Catherine. Thank you, Alex. We're so, so excited to have you here. I'm, I'm, really I'm happy to be here. I appreciate you being a part of the show. Oh, thank you. Which is going to be extra special. Um, we, we actually have a guest in, in studio. studio. So this is our first time. Yeah. So if there's any hiccups, apologize in advance. <laughs> but anyway, it should be great. Um, I've been following Sue's work for a while now. And if I could have anyone in the world shoot me for a beauty portrait, a glamour shot, any kind of portrait where I wanted to look beautiful, anyone in the world, it would be this woman sitting right here. She's phenomenal. She just won Australian Portrait Photographer of the Year is one of her most recent accolades among many. Um, and I'm just so thrilled and happy and honored to have you here, especially from all the way from, wait, I wanted to give our viewers and the like, audience a, a guess. How can you tell when someone's from Australia or from New Zealand by the word milk. <laughs> <laughs> how do you take your coffee? How's that now? How's that? How do, how do yeah, because there's always, I always wonder, like, if people have an Australian accent, I'm scared to say, are you from New Zealand or Australia? Because there's an ego a lot of times. There's an issue. Tried. Yeah, people are, oh, no. Mm -hmm. So how can you tell? Uh, Kiwis say milk. Milk? Yeah, milk, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, Australians say milk. So yes, Australians yeah. say milk, and Kiwis say milk. 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 It's quite obvious, yeah. So, yeah. you so you just you ask people coffee? how they like their coffee, and then you don't have to ask them the awkward question. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. I'm going to And then you could be awkward. all knowing. You could be like, oh, so you're oh, from you're New from Zealand. Zealand. <laughs> and people that are usually probably assume that they're from Australia because there's a lot more of them. Right. So then you can look really smart. That is the key to the operation. This is our main tip today. <laughs> yes, that, that's our tip. You thought you were coming here for photography tips, but it turns out that we're going to tell you how to tell the difference. Today's episode, how to tell the difference between a Kiwi and Australia. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to stop our, start off the show with the, as we always do, with a tip. So you can go ahead and head over to my blog. Um, so first off, I just wanted to emphasize to all you photographers out there the importance of tests. And what I mean by a test is a shoot that you put together. And I highly encourage pulling together an entire team makeup artist, a stylist, a photographer, the more people involved, the higher quality the shoot's gonna be, assuming everyone's at the same level mm -hmm. of quality. Um, and really getting out there, the importance for shoot, test shoots is staying inspired, um, doing projects that you really are excited about but a client may not wanna commission. Um, Trying things that you are a little risky. Well, and a lot of times, that one of the issues with the, with the client is, I mean, with clients is that they don't know what they want necessarily. And exactly. You need to show them what they exactly. want. Exactly. Right? And so I, I had this idea for this old period piece. We can scroll down that I wanted to do in um, San Francisco and and shoot um, a bunch of women in sort of a World War II era mm -hmm. in this building that's insanely beautiful, Julia Morgan Ballroom, um, really beautiful space. And we put together a team and Sue, I wanted to hear your input on tests. What do you, what do you feel about them? Uh, definitely. It's something that I um, tell photographers in my workshops and in my platforms to do. Um, you know, when you lose your you start losing your creative love for what you do and you start paying bills and becoming a non-photographer and, and you get really disconnected. I yeah. always say do a shoot that you just really love, just a free shoot or a test shoot, something that just really inspires your passion and then you blog about it and you don't have to say it was a freebie, you just people know that you're working and, and it brings all of your passion just flooding back immediately. Do you find that clients come to you, you do a test shoot, and then they see it and they want something similar to that? Of course. 
Yeah. So then it's another way. It, it's, people hire for you for what they see. It's advertising. Yeah. So it's another way of getting hired advertising. for what you want to do. Well, and it's one of the ways to get out of the rut of, yeah. of the exactly. only thing you get hired to do is what you've done in the exactly. past. Exactly. You know, and if, if all you do is what, what falls in, you're not really taking a, 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 a real control over your... Destiny. And what you show, you attract. So you know, exactly. if, you show, if you show a genre, you attract only that genre. And that's another tip. We'll just give a free duty tip. But that's so huge is that I, a lot of times photographers complain, well, people only hire me for this. Or people, and it doesn't matter if you're a pro or an amateur, people only want me to shoot this. Yeah. And I go, well, what are you showing? Well, this, because that's what everyone keeps asking me to shoot. And it's like this vicious cycle. And yep. so a test is a way to break out of that. And, and, and I only show exactly what I want to shoot. I don't show right. things that I'm not really no. passionate about. So, anyway. and it's hard. I think it's, it's it's hard because a lot of times you have so much work in a certain area, and so and you have so little work in the area that you want to go into. I know that we do that on the video end all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we're showing the Julia Morgan Ballroom too, and they do a lot of events and weddings. So anyone that's out there that's wants to get wedding married, wants to get wedding. I, I'd it's a like really to... great place to get wedding. <laughs> anyone that wants to get married in San Francisco, you can see this venue is like the epiphany of old world San Francisco. It's so rich, it's so beautiful. Um, it's just exquisite. So, where is and that the in staff Francisco? there is insane. It's where, where is it in San Francisco? In San Francisco, it's downtown. Okay. Yeah, like right by the cable car tracks. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Linda Highland is, um, works with them and she's one of the most amazing people I've ever met. She's just on top of it. She knows everyone, very connected. <coughs> um, so anyway. We digress. So back to Sue Bryce. Well, super psyched to have you here today. I think I want to launch the show just so people can kind of understand where she comes from and what she's capable of with some of her before and afters. Um, so Sue, first off, how did you get into doing the type of photography that you do right now? Uh, I've never done anything else. So when I was 22, the glamour photography, glamour trend was probably the biggest trend in the world at the time. And I was sort of young and female and caught up in the whole glamour thing. But by the time I started shooting in studio, glamour had gone out of fashion and just had become a dirty word. So um, yeah. I had to kind of evolve a more natural light style in order to keep it alive. Otherwise, I wasn't allowed to do it anymore. Well, that's actually my question, because even when I was introducing you, <coughs> it, even when I was introducing you, I was scared to say glamour photographer, because a lot of times it equates to that like over-processed, right. studio over-lit, um, so cheesy, finite. too much <laughs> cleavage, you know, just the whole thing. And it's, it has become a dirty word. So do you call yourself a glamour photographer? And do you ever feel like people judge you based on that title? I use the word glamour in my byline for my marketing, but I don't call it glamour photography. I call it contemporary portrait because it is just modern natural light portrait. I focus mostly on trying to change the perception of it and I can't really do that with words I can only really show images and then but it's so strongly branded I don't know whether it's something I actually want to walk away from it is glamour it's it's glamour in every form it's, yeah and I, I, it's how I would describe my studio and myself so I just don't use it as a glamour photography but I definitely use it in there use the word yeah, glamour. absolutely so why natural light um, because for me, flashlight looks like a 80s and 90s glamour, and um, with models it looks fashion, but with real women it looks like really old style of um, glamour photography that mm -hmm. everybody knows and hates. So for me, at the time we were getting rid of the lights and opening the curtains in our studio, yeah. my probably inspiration was back then, uh, late 90s was Herb Ritz. Um, all natural light, just beautiful natural light shooters and and for me that's how I started to evolve it and I never went back to flash again. Hmm. Hmm. So we're looking at all these before and afters and I'm sure our viewers are wondering how much retouching is going on between these before and afters? Yeah, it's, um, <clears throat> it's really interesting because uh, I don't, I retouch everything. I retouch my images before my clients see them um, it's a finished product for me. For me, the, the finished product is including retouching. Um, just like a magazine ad, they retouch the models and they finish it. For me, it's contemporary glamour. It's, it's very modern fashion type glamour. But I have a two minute rule. So 
Um, I photograph, I choose 30 images from a shoot to show my clients. I retouch each, all 30 images, two minutes each. I try and get uh, a setup done in um, one hour. So, so that blows my mind. So you're telling me two minutes. Yeah. Between that. Yeah. Two minutes only retouching her. And I do a live, there's a live demo on my blog <clears throat> that actually shows me cloning um, and even contouring bodies, and I do it in under two minutes. So I had to prove it because people don't believe it. So. But it's just yeah. fast and furious. I mean, you just you already kind of have an yeah. idea of where you're going to go with it, right? As you're shooting, yeah. you, you can see what oh, I'm going to I'm going to go in there and grab on. It's the things. same thing with everybody. It's it's um, just skin retouching, a bit of body contouring, lifting mm -hmm. the eyes. So it's really because I spend thing. a more time than two minutes, and I don't think mine look as good. <laughs> I actually gave. So where, what am I missing here? I gave a, a Photoshop just, um, talk once to about fifty photographers, and um, one of them came up to me afterwards and said, "You've just you've bastardized Photoshop," um, because I had to learn how to do twenty four women a week in order to make money in my studio. So we had to do everything the quick way. So I've learned the quick way to do everything. So. And, and we're gonna. She's gonna share yeah. some tips as we get on later in the show. Sure. Well, the it looks great. Way. The results yeah. are all the matter. You know, I know. At, at, yeah. at, at the end good makeup this. too. Good so makeup, yeah, good hair, and a good reflection. That? I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. so retouching is not. There is a drastic difference between the before and afters. Mm -hmm. um, so my first question is, I'll st start with the physical, and then we'll go sure. to the m more depth. But what are you doing exterior-wise to help them evolve from that before to that after? Well, mm -hmm. I don't really like before and afters that much because I don't believe you look like that you know everybody looks bad when they get up in the morning with no makeup on and without their hair done so but anyway it's a neat way to show the transformation um, I always have a professional stylist with me so hair and makeup or I do it myself is um, a huge part of what I do just to relax my client prepare my client but most of the work that I see in Glamour and Beauty have really bad hair and makeup. Um, people are not very good at doing it. They're not very good at doing their own. Makeup artists are not very talented. Um, I work with a really amazing selection of makeup artists in all three countries. I have somebody that I can call on that I really love and or I do it myself. So that's, that's the next question is, because if I were to try to do it for myself, I, I can't do makeup. I'm not a skilled makeup artist. So how does a photographer know if they're capable of doing makeup in a way that's going to produce results like these? And when, Or is it something that's easily learned or is it better to really team up with somebody that that's what they specialize in? Because I know you have history yeah. of working as a makeup artist. I do, yeah. So I created um, makeup cards for my website. It's on my blog. You can, you can have a look at them and, and see my simple rules and they're just rules that I follow that look really good and um, photographed so mm -hmm. um, it's actually really easy it what are like really, three really top easy. tips for makeup application uh, my rules are all matte foundations all matte eyeshadows no shimmers all matte um, right through even I prefer matte lips with gloss no shimmers at all because in natural light they they don't photograph well um, uh, big hair, if you can, because big hair looks fabulous and always looks great with air in it. And my third really important is no blush and no contouring with bronzing because it looks like bruising. I would rather see... Um, oh, so you do no blush and no, no contouring? No, no. A light dusting of pink on the cheeks um, to lift the face and that's it. Uh, blusher, the old way of using blusher and bronzer is that photographs really, really badly. So. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Huh. Those are my rules. And then what about, do you feel like that translates to film, to, to moving picture as well? Um, definitely, of course, yes, because I shoot video, so um, it's the same makeup. So then now for people that say don't want to go down the avenue of learning how to do it themselves, how? what are some tips on selecting the right makeup artist and hair? Do you usually work with one person that does hair and makeup, and how do you select those professionals? There's um, about five different ways to hire a makeup artist. You can pay them an hourly rate. You can. Um, I employed three full-time makeup artists in my studio in New Zealand and taught them Photoshop because they they picked up Photoshop really easily. It's like doing makeup on the computer. So they had a dual role within my business. So when they weren't doing makeup, they were preparing the images 
and then preparing orders to go out. So that's all they did was makeup and Photoshop. Huh. Do, yeah. do you think that there is something, um, I know that when, as an effects artist, I was a visual effects artist yes. for a long time. The, 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 the fact that I was doing modeling and texturing and animation and everything else made a big difference. Do you think that there's something about the fact that you're doing the makeup, you're doing the photography, you're doing the, the, the post work that ties all of them together? Like you know that, oh, I don't have to do this part of the makeup because I'm going to clean that up on the other side or I'm going to take a photo around it. And when I'm taking the photos, I know that I'm going to, I know exactly what I'm going to clean up. Usually that's something that lives in three or four different people mm, rather yeah. than rather than one single person. Do you think that that gives you an advantage? Totally. Um, interestingly enough, um, I don't think the makeup is as heavy as it used to be or as important as it used to be now that Photoshop is so incredibly advanced. So right. I recently photographed a girl that refused to wear makeup. Right. She was, um, she just... She said, I do not wear it. I do not want to be photographed with it. I do not want my hair done. I just want to wear a ponytail and a singlet and just be photographed like this. And, um, of course, Photoshop is is makeup. It's, right. it's digital makeup. So um, it's not actually that important anymore. Right. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 good it's, it's, hair it's, is probably more important than... Good what? Good hair. Yeah. You yeah. can't Photoshop good hair on. So right. I actually... <laughs> I actually think good hair is probably more important than good makeup. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. It's so funny because I assume, I always thought like makeup was more important than hair, mm. and I'm just, I'm beginning to realize. I mean, because that's the frame. Yep. It's mm. framing your face. And to be honest with you, people look more natural with less makeup on. They look more and, themselves. And yeah. that's a lot, a lot of times when we, you know, when I do makeup. Yes. And so I, I only do a little bit of makeup. Mm -hmm. We have a matte finish that we just put on everybody. Yeah. It, yeah. It, we, we tend to. I think that the technical term is tends to be drywalling. Yeah. But we just, you know, we just, we just literally, we have this. This <laughs> Mac makes this thing. I guess they keep on talking about getting rid of it. Yeah. It's this matte, like matte finish or whatever. But it's literally <laughs> like this gel. And you just we just you know put it all over someone's yeah. face and it just, yeah. we just don't That's want them the to be That's the way guys shiny. do it. They just go like this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's like this. We just we, this part we, we like to right here. We just go like this. <laughs> <laughs> rub it all over them, you know. And so, but it, but it, but it is funny that that you know I, I always find that you know trying to work too much of that yeah. oftentimes makes people I look need to. garish at times. Mm, garish, they, yeah, yeah. Because you need some color too. Mm. Right. No one to be completely matte. Yeah. So anyway, I'm going to ask you to to flip your hair the other direction. Oh, is it going over my mat? It's just going. It's not. It's just going over your uh, your mic there. Oh, but so. hair is everything. I can't. I know your, your hair is. It's great. It's great. It's everything just on the other side. So uh, sorry, other side, else? other side. So I have a question. Are you? Do you ever get to a point where you are doing something and during the retouching process? How do you know when it's too much? Like, say you're slimming in something or you're pulling in something. Do you ever get to a point where you're questioning? Oh, I don't know if this is too exaggerated. Is the client going to like this? Is it real enough? Mm. And how do you respond to that? All the time. I watch retouch. I, I teach people how to retouch, and then I spend the rest of the year teaching them how to pull back their retouching. Yeah. It's a, everybody does it. So after uh, 10, 15 years of working on Photoshop, you just become so good at doing it that you try not to overdo it. But yeah, I overwork my images sometimes and have to pull them back. So what about History people that are brush. just getting started? What are what would be some advice on finding that nice fine balance, that line of helping but not going over the top? Um, at the point of showing my images to my client, I want them to think that there's been no retouching done. Okay. So I don't remove bags and lines. I remove the shadows underneath them. Oh, I want to okay. keep the integrity of the face um, yeah. without compromising that. So it's just something you have to learn. You have to try it and... And then. So a lot of people that are familiar with your work assume that there is, you know, we're finding out there's not a lot of retouching, but they assume that there is so much work done. Yeah. Why? I don't know. Good I know why. No, good reflectors. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have this ability. I mean, if you look at her work, and if you watch the videos, she has a lot of behind the scene videos that are really fascinating to watch. But to bring out this sort of raw, sexy, un inhibited, vulnerable beauty in these women. And I'm wondering, how how do you do that? Uh, I really, um, yeah, I get asked this a lot. So um, I don't think it's something you give them. Like, I don't think, like, people say, give them a glass of champagne and, and talk in a sexy voice and all the rest of it. I, I, I don't believe any of that. I believe that everybody walks around quite guarded, and um, when they're in the studio and and you know they're safe and they feel comfortable with me, and they're, they're talking to me and I take control. I'm very assertive in my shoot, 
as you know. So, yeah. you know, I'm bossy and, and I, I'm in charge. So once I take the power and I allow them to sort of relax, um, you just literally, people just bring it forward. It's something that's inside everybody. They just need to be re relaxed enough to bring it out of them. So, so how do you get to that relax point? I, don't, I just speak to people and I ask them to give it to me and, and if they hold back, I just keep talking to them so that they know that it's okay to let it come forward. And, and what are ways that people, because it's kind of a serial, so yeah, I'm sure. to break this down. Like what are ways that you could describe physically that people, you see people holding back? Like what do they do? Um, like are they tight in the mouth? Are they oh, tight in the totally. eye? Like what, what are some things that Most they do and how do you get them to let it go? Yeah, all of their tension in their mouth for starters. Um, hands, are, you can see the tension in hands because people can look almost relaxed in their face but um, the hands are either in a fist, a claw, or the Thunderbird, as I call it. So yeah. um, just to watch. <laughs> there's names for it that says it all. Yeah. The Thunderbird. <laughs> yeah, so there's, the, you know, the fist is tied or the claw is like, Ew, and then the Thunderbird always makes me laugh. But um, really just to keep asking them, yeah, it's always through that mouth and it's always just holding back in the eyes. And as soon as you relax the mouth and ask for the eyes, they come forward. It's right there. So relax the mouth. And, yeah, and relax the face, relax the mouth. Just and then bring the expression through the eyes. So that's what you'll actually physically say. Yeah, very much. Yeah. And then, as far as bringing the expression mm. to their eye, if they're just not getting it, what's a way? I mean, because you hear people say, "Smile with your eyes, smile mm. with your eyes," but it's kind of hard to understand that when you're being shot, you're being photographed. I'll take the camera away and I'll look at them directly and I'll do it. The okay. expression. So as soon as I do it, they look straight back at me, and because you do, you want to mimic. You do. Because you just did it to me and I just yeah, went. You did. <laughs> <laughs> so the face. I did do it myself. In body language, the face you look at mirrors your own. Yeah. You know, so if you talk to someone with a stern face, they talk back to you with a stern face. So um, generally, the second I'll relax my face and, and give that eye contact, that they'll do it straight away. So obviously, you're, as you're, from what you're saying, it's important for you as a photographer to yes. be calm and relaxed throughout the entire session. I'm not often calm. I'm usually bossy and throwing out orders, but what's important is that I know what to ask for. Yeah. And so I've practiced for hours and hours in my own expressions and poses. So I know what works. And what so what, what are things mm -hmm. people can do to practice? Mirror work. Just practicing all of the poses that you do in mirror. So. That makes sense. Mm. Yeah. Mirror works so you, you have to learn if I'll, I'll do it to camera so that people yeah. can see. So I love it. I was, yeah, I was, yeah. I was scared to ask. I here was like, is. okay, let's, let's bring it. I tried to get camera to do this, and she yeah. didn't do it for me. Okay. So one of the things that I teach in workshops is about um, going through all of the expressions. So people will hold all of their tension, you know, in their mouths or here or awkward smiles, and it's about teaching people and and teaching yourself how to go through a range of expressions that are camera faces where you've got a relaxed mouth and and that you can do real smiles without doing silly smiles, without tension, relaxing the bottom lip, dropping the bottom lip, engaging the eyes, lots of smiling in the eyes. All those expressions are so subtle. But if you're looking at someone and doing them, they'll do them back to you. So you're not telling the models to look in the mirrors you, prior to the shoot. You, in no. fact, are doing it yourself. The photographers. The photographer. Yeah. Doing it themselves, getting them packed, nailed down, and then yes. asking the mirror to model them yeah. during the shoot. Yes. So anytime you feel like the model's getting tight or things aren't going right, you'll pull your face away from the camera. Yep. You'll connect with them. Mm -hmm. You'll give them the eyes that you want. Mm -hmm. You'll give them the lips that you want. So, in essence, you're in control the entire time. Always, right down to the last eyelash where they're looking. Yeah, I never leave them out there on their own and I don't stop talking. Because as soon as you stop talking, there's a camera between you and they start to think about how they're being, that they're in front of a camera, that they're suddenly the self-conscious veil drops back over, you can see it come back over. So, so what are you saying? Constantly just directing working the body, pushing the shoulder forward, bringing your chin to me, lots of expression, keep going. This is really beautiful. I'm, I'm yeah, just constant talking. As soon as my camera comes up, I don't stop talking. Oh, mm. That makes sense. Mm. Really fascinating. Mm. So we have something super exciting. Yeah, well, we, um, I'm really, really, really excited about it. Actually, before we go to that, I do have one question. Sure. What about mm. men? Because I, I 
I see this, you're saying, you know, you're giving this directing advice. And for a female, it's easy for me to say, oh, okay, give me this, give me this. What do you advise for men? I actually was taught um, by a man. So, oh, yeah, really? so when people say, can men do this, beauty images, yes, they can. Um, they can make women feel comfortable and confident and beautiful just like women can. Um, the difference. Even more so in some ways. Well, I, maybe. I don't and, know. And it's yeah. unique. Yeah. They have ways in which they can do it that we yeah. can't. So the man that taught me um, really loved women and he wasn't, you know, he was really relaxed around them and just loved them and it wasn't awkward or sleazy or anything he did was just perfect the way he spoke to women and appreciated their beauty and and um the way he worked with them yeah so he could do it so i think anyone can do it what mm. type of photographer is the ideal glamour photographer um somebody that can um, take control of uh, somebody in your studio that's quite people react really badly when they're nervous um, and it is very vulnerable it's a vulnerable situation to be photographed um, I find you have to kind of take charge and so you have to be quite authoritative but you have to be able to read people really well and just move with what they're doing you know sometimes people react um, in a really strange way and they can be quite um, badly behaved you know some people act like children when they feel vulnerable so it's quite weird. What's an example of a way someone's reacted yeah, oh, in I had, an unmanageable way yes. and that how, how did you bring them back? I had a woman come into my studio. At the time I was quite young so I was about 27 and I wasn't, uh, she was older than me and she instantly just barreled over me in terms of me taking control of the shoot and whenever I held her gaze to the camera, so whenever I could just hold her gaze enough to take a photo, she'd go yuck, 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 yuck and then throw her head away. She'd say that? Yeah, and I couldn't hold her gaze. She just did not want to look at the camera and she just felt so just vulnerable and I didn't understand enough when I was younger about how people act or react when they feel that vulnerable. Yeah. I just thought she was being, you know, Bizarre. We'll just leave it at that. Well, yeah. <laughs> and um, so, really, now I've just learnt to say, just trust me, come on, it's okay, you can do this. And, and I've learnt how to get through it. But back then I was just, I was mystified by it. Do you think it. people, do you think it's born from people not having faith in you? When you say, just trust me, is that what... Is yeah, the... well, now I would say, okay, I would stop it straight away from happening. But back then I, I was not equipped to take charge. So I guess um, that's authority and that I can, I'm confident enough to tell her to trust me and believe it. Got it. Yeah. So and if I had to surprise her. So I had to make her look down and then go, snap, every time she looked up. <laughs> I just had to keep trying. It was just, you had to figure out some way to make yeah, this Yeah, I just had know. to keep surprising her. It was quite funny. Mm -hmm. oh, so you have, she has a, you're going to love this one, Alex. You won't guess this, but she has a black belt. Tell me about your black belt and tell me how that affects your photography. Oh. Uh, I studied Japanese karate for six and a half years and um, I'm a black belt. Uh, uh, it's a personality type. What, what's the personality type? Uh, just to be that tenacious, to master something, oh, okay. to spend three hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year for six and a half years to achieve something. And um, uh, how, what age were you when you did this? 25 when I okay. started and 31 when I retired. Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, it was a great period of my life and um, I guess I work the same way now that I probably, you know, when I do something, I, I want to do. Did you learn really anything do from that? I mean, that's insane, like the mm. amount that went into that. Yeah. What, how did that help you as a photographer? I know that we're all shaped by wow. our experiences. That you can get beaten down so often and you can just stand up. You learn to be incredibly tenacious and resistant, resilient and um, that you know, sometimes somebody tells you you can't do something and that makes you want it more. And, um, yeah. Has anyone ever told you you can't do what you're doing? Yes. Yeah. And what have they said and how have you reacted? Um, somebody once told me when I was really young that I simply would, I would never be a photographer because I lacked people skills. And, um, you know, that I had um, poor dress sense and bad elocution. So. 
But it's poor Justin said bad what? <laughs> and I remembered that. Isn't that funny? But you know, yeah, still, yeah, was like, was like, still right? pulled trying yeah, to get that yeah. one out of my oh, shoulders. That like, came out too. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. Yeah, no. I think um, you know what? I actually believe that people don't say things to you. People only say out loud what you think in your own head. Okay, so elaborate on that that you attract everything in your life, I believe this. So I believe that their lack of belief in myself was just mirroring my own belief that I could never be a photographer. Oh, and so how did you overcome that? Um, well, I didn't try to be good enough. I just fell in love with what I did and then everybody else did. Okay, got it. Yeah. 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 So, I, you know, you can't try to be better for other people. You can only love what you do every day and then people just love it because people are so drawn to passion and joy and, and they run into so yeah, few people do. that are full of passion you know, and, joy. It's, and, when, and when you do <laughs> awesome. when you do you want it you right. want yeah. some of it and that's what's fun when you're in a, especially when you're creative environment I mean, that's one of the fun things about being here you know twit and fixed is that there's so many yeah. people that are passionate about what they're yes. doing and that and you kind of feed off of that energy of, of what's going on in, inside of an office yeah. mm. it's so interesting because i i think as artists we go through this we're conditioned to think that you have to work hard and you're going to be struggling and all those things. And I remember in the beginning of my career, I felt like if I was earning money on photography, I had to have some sort of like, I was working so hard, working right. so hard. And I, I was actually seeing a psychologist at the time and she said, it's celebrate, have fun, right. love it. You don't have to tell your clients you're working hard. Just tell your clients how much you love their work, how mm. passionate you are about it, how that's such a lighter, airier, celebratory state to be in. And it took me a while to transition out of that sort of, you feel, you almost think since you're making money right. on it, your passion, mm -hmm. there has to be that sort of like Tangent. negative to it, mm -hmm. that like I'm work hard, 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 work, work, work. And it's not that I don't work hard, but I, it's, you know, it's that celebration of, of enjoying it and loving it and all of it. So, absolutely. But you have to come to that. You, I, I'm gonna quote you, and I want you to elaborate on this. Um, only person, ever in your way is you yes and this is my favorite part take responsibility for that yeah okay well when did i say that <laughs> <laughs> um she's like i've changed my mind yeah, yeah it's all your fault that was last, that was, that was, yeah, last year that was a... look um everything i've ever had to accomplish in my life the only person who ever stood in the way was me and what i believed so if you take that away, if you change that mindset, if you if you shift your focus, everything shifts. You know, I've had I've been the quintessential artist with three dollars in my bank and no idea of how to pay rent next week. And yet that was my folio. That's what my folio looked like. So how could I do what I do and not believe in myself enough to make money? So I've been all of that. I've been struggling, I've been poor. You know, I've, I've tried to go leave photography and go and get a job. Now I've done that twice in, in the last, in the first 10 years. What of were those career. jobs? I worked in a jewelry store. Oh my gosh. I know, and uh, I lasted three weeks. And a woman walked up to me, one of the managers, and she walked up to me and she went, you can take your 10 minute break now. And, 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 I remembered standing there thinking, oh my God. How did I get here? I'm an artist. Yeah. So you just so gotta... how do you pull yourself out? I mean, you obviously had the realization, but how do you? How did you change your thought process and perspective mm. to mm. attract what you wanted versus what you were? I think unintentionally attracting. The short version is that there's if you're trying to be something, you're in your ego, but if you're just being it, you're in your enthusiasm. Ego breeds more negative and more everything negative comes with ego. But when you're in just pure enthusiasm, when you're lost in what you're doing, and you love doing something so much, you would actually do it for free. Um, once you get lost in that and really share that, then it perpetuates on a positive. So you just have to write goals for what you want. And then every day, actively participate in achieving them. So don't sit back and go, I wish I could have this, or I wish I could have that. If your goal is to make a million dollars, then tell me 20 ways you can do it and then start one tomorrow. So give yeah. me numbers. I wanna hear about, this is really fascinating, the growth of your studio. Mm. I made a decision. 
I was struggling, I was poor, I had been a photographer in the studio for 10 years, I had been a paid photographer, so I had a beautiful folio, but I was earning $400 a week as a wage. Right. Uh, I, I left there because I didn't like it anymore. I struggled for one year and what fed me was teaching photographers Photoshop. So photographers won't pay someone else to do their Photoshop, but they'll pay $100 now to learn it. So that fed me for a year, uh, still only earning around $400 a week, paying my rent. I was 32 with nothing. And then one day my car blew up. I had no savings. I had nothing, no way to create, uh, or I had to go and borrow money to buy a new car, which I could not pay back because I was self-employed with no income. And so I made a decision. So I thought, well, I have to get serious now. So I sat down and I wrote a marketing plan and uh, I created in three months a brand. I um, painted my garage, inside garage, and um, I started to just actively market myself, which I had never done before. I was too scared to put myself out there. And a lot of photographers say that they're marketing themselves or a lot of creatives say they are, but they're actually not. They talk about it a lot, but they don't actually do anything. So I actively, and it took everything I had. I was so afraid. Now what does is, what is actively mean? Oh, I went, I, I knocked on doors. Mm -hmm. I emailed people, I phoned people. It made me sick to my core. I was so afraid of rejection. Okay. And um, Who do you call though? When you want to, who are you calling? Other, you paint, you yeah. paint your garage, I, you have yeah. nothing. I, okay. I, paint, I called other businesses. Okay. And I said, I want you to give me to your clients. I want you to give me to your databases, but I wouldn't expect you to do that until you've tried me yourself. And so I gave every one of those business owners a $500 shoot voucher. I had nothing to wow. lose. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, That's one, great. And once they met me, um, and they fell in love with their work and my work. They gave me to everybody. I booked from that first round of marketing 297 makeovers in three weeks. So I went from nothing to being overwhelmed to being fully booked for three and a half months. And our studio went from nothing to $20,000 a week in turnover in, in 13 weeks. 13 weeks? Yeah. It's crazy. And I had, at the end of 13 weeks, I had a business partner who was my second photographer and two makeup artists full time who I was teaching Photoshop. And then that, that was the launch uh, in 2003 of my business. And I've been a business person ever since. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We're business. So, yeah. for, so tips for people that may not want to necessarily do this as a career, but they kind of want to dabble in it cheaply. So paint the garage. What else could you do that's not going to require to break a leg, um, arm and um, a leg, or break the bank? I mean, I set up my, you know, all those things. Confused. I set up that entire studio, including the couch and the plasma TV, for three thousand dollars. The whole thing, cheap curtains. I painted it myself. I, you know, any furniture that I found and thrown out, I painted white and put it in the studio. You know. It was done so cheaply. My reflectors are fifteen dollars each. Yeah, tell tell us about your. We're, we're going to get. Well, actually, we'll touch on that with the yeah. gear section. Yeah. But she is going to tell us how to get a fifteen dollars reflector. Yeah. That she uses. To, I have a hard time. I, I need. I need to see this. <laughs> this fifteen dollars reflector. This thing so, that you speak of. Anyway, so I one of the things that I was so excited about having her here is she actually. Well, why don't you announce? What did we do on Sunday? Well, the thing, like I always say to people, is you can't, um, you wouldn't expect me to, um, unless you'd experience it step for yourself. So, you know, I made Catherine do a shoot. She made me. That's the way to do yeah. it. That is the way to I do it. I was very, very grateful. So, um, we're going to see the we'll photos. Do a little, yeah, we're going to see the photos on the oh, show, and she's going to walk us through it. I'm going to, you know, share my experience. And before we do that, we do have a quick little break. Okay. But definitely stay tuned for some awesome, well, I'm super excited. I haven't seen them all yet. I haven't seen any of them. <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting there. I, ha I have the files. I, yeah. If I could just look like the way she, I look in those photos all the time, the world would be a better place. <laughs> <laughs> before, before we get to that, we want to thank uh, Ring Central Creative. Uh, Ring Central. Um, this is, uh, uh, you know, one of the things that Twit has really moved into is using Ring, uh, Ring Central, which is the, the leader in cutting edge office phone systems. So this is basically a phone system in the cloud. So, you know, you, you don't need the PBX box. A lot of us remember the old fashioned, they bring in these PBX boxes yeah. and hook them up downstairs in the basement. You don't need to do any of that. It's totally affordable. It doesn't cost thousands of dollars. It's to totally easy to set up. 
Um, you get more features uh, than the old-fashioned hardware PBX. Uh, you get a fax in your inbox. It, it works with your smartphone and it and a lot more. It's it's just really an amazing way to to kind of move forward. The um, it's twenty five dollars per month per user, and that includes unlimited usage. Uh, so you you definitely want to. Take a look at Ring Central. That is and, and, awesome. And, yeah, I mean, it's like you know, you're just kind of like I'm you know. Like, wow. Well, then this is because I think a lot of us are stuck in between um, this situation where like we have an office phone, but everyone's got cell phones, and mm -hmm. everyone's got, and no one really knows, and we don't really spend much on the office phone mm -hmm. because you know this is Pixel Core. Now, Twit has really moved to this Ring Central. Now we're looking, you know, you know, um, we're really looking at this because you know you get into this in between of how do I make both of these worlds work, you know, yeah. because we're, we're kind of in that transition. And, and Ring Central is a great place to uh, to start. And, and, to, and, to, and I mean, this is just a great way to solve this problem. Um, so you can get rid of that old PBX system in the basement or don't bother getting one if you don't have one um, and, and try out Ring Central. Um, and, you know, this is something that Twit's already done. Leo trusts them. You should you should definitely give it a shot. You should trust them, too. Um, you know, so what you want to do is start right right now with a 30-day risk-free trial at ringcentral.com or you can call 1-800-800-4070. That's right. It's 1-800-800-4070. And again, 1-800-800-4070 ringcentral.com. And uh, now we get to see the photos. Without further ado. <laughs> get the photos. I think I'm the most excited for we this part. We need the photos. All right, so hold on. Let me, let me, uh, let me hide this. <laughs> So I have to say, I just want to give one little disclaimer. It's interesting, or perception. Before we, ta we talked, I, ha I did what a lot of people do, I think, that look at your website. And they assume you're doing a ton of retouching. All and models. that you're, you're morphing. It's no longer that person anymore. And it was fascinating to me, because I see these images of myself, and that's what I looked like on that day. And that's just what she brought out in me. It is not Photoshop. No. You know, it, it's that's how I remember feeling and being on that day. So that's why I think you have the skill that's just, I've never seen anyone else have. It's just phenomenal. So it's about choosing four outfits that are you, really, that, you, that represent what you like to wear and, and who you are. And um, it's beautiful. So one of the things that you brought to the shoot that I think is super important is starting off with the hair and makeup and really emphasizing that and, and being involved with the process. I know mm. a lot of photographers are disconnected with the hair and makeup process. And you weren't. You were there the entire time and you work with makeup mm. artists on a regular basis and really direct them. Um, what are you looking for? Let's just stop there. Oh, yeah let's, yeah. yeah, let's take a look at this is our before and after. You ready? Yeah. 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 So, obviously. by the way, and this is, I'm being vulnerable here. <laughs> I was scared to do this, but this is me uh, rolled out of bed. I don't yeah. even have. She's wet hair, too. I, my hair is wet <laughs> in a ponytail. I have zero, zero, zero makeup on, not even like yeah. anything. And you don't want to look different. You just want to look polished and gorgeous. You don't, the idea is not that you look too far away from how you looked on the day that's that's a really really important yeah yeah so you I I don't want my makeup artist to do something that's too far away from what you would wear or what what you would do if you were getting ready for an event so what's the direction that you would give a makeup artist say you're a new photographer you mm. don't have a makeup artist that you mm. can trust what do you tell them to achieve this sort of look not too much makeup. Matte eyes go, um, they can do the eyes as dark as the client wants them. It's not me, it's, it's up to the client. If they want a natural eye, they can have natural eyes. Um, and lots of soft volume in the hair. So it's, yeah, that's it. Mattes, a light dusting of pink on the cheeks. The rules I said before. And what about hair? Um, I want the hair to um, definitely have a little bit of movement in it. Straight hair is harder to photograph. Mm -hmm. um, hair with softness in it definitely looks fantastic, blows really well, um, has lots of volume. Um, but the truth is is that if people want straight hair, then they have to be photographed with straight hair. So, And if they have short hair, they have short hair. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and the other thing too is, she's just saying it blows well. Um, a lot of time you see fans on set, and yes. one thing that we used during our shoot was a blow dryer. And it was, it was great because it was warm. Yeah. And a small tip, and it's directional too, so you can really aim it. Oh, so, so this, this is, is Clifford. 
Oh, yeah, we gotta talk about Clifford for a second. This guy's just a genius. <laughs> Clifford I, Hashimoto. Everyone, everyone was talking about Clifford. I mean, before the show, there was a lot of... If, oh, I, could, uh, if I could only have Clifford every day of my yeah. life, it would be a better world. He's a genius. I've, I've worked with over 400 makeup artists in my career, and I've met five good ones, and he's definitely one of those five. So, um, you know, I have favorites, and he's, he's really, he's magical. He, and he, he's, he's wonderful. He's very gifted. He's wonderful. He's brilliant. He's yeah. actually, I would say he's the, I don't use the word brilliant yeah. loosely. And he's in San Francisco, right? Yeah, he's in San Francisco. Um, Clifford Style, you can look him up, Clifford Hashimoto. Um, for anything, anytime you need makeup, whether it's for an event, or getting your hair done, anything, he's the best. I think his gift too is the way he listens to what you want. And, you know, he's, his work is above his ego so yeah he just yeah. didn't he he was there for you and me he wasn't there for himself yeah and um he was yeah incredible great amazing so, to work couldn't say good enough good stuff mm. about him his anyway. makeup and hair can go really horribly wrong well that, that was stage. that was the thing that actually i would say I, one of the reasons why i appreciate him so much mm. is i didn't have to a lot of time when i'm getting my hair and makeup done i i'm on edge yes i'm watching them and i'm thinking like oh i don't know i don't yeah. know with him, I could just let go, and having that faith made it such a more comfortable, wonderful mm -hmm. experience for me as being the model that day, knowing that I was taken care of. And this was the studio too. Um, it was such a neat studio that we we got to shoot in because obviously I require natural light, and you had to accommodate me in this sense. So, what is this place called? Oh my God! It's Anyone that needs this is like a dude's paradise. It's Actually, the, dude, the dude's paradise. It's it full is. photographers and filmmakers. It's it's um, it's amazing. Yeah. It's like this guy. His name's Philippe. He phenomenal guy. He basically, I think he honestly like it's you know how guys like their man cave like right. like space. I think he dreamed up like what would be like the best fantasy studio for me. Like what's my toy studio? Mm -hmm. It has and nine rooms. And he created rooms. this. It has nine rooms. Yeah. If you go to the website, it's insane. It has nine rooms. Um, and each room has a theme. Yes. This is it's, Island Events? Yeah, Island Events. And mm. this is right in Treasure Island. That's the boudoir room. You can see how different it looks, you know, depending mm. on how you light it. Isn't this place crazy? This is awesome. Mm. Yeah, it's and insane. They had, the day before we were there, they had a Ferrari in the actual center of the um, studio shooting like a Kill Bill. Now that that does make it the ultimate dude room. Yeah, a yeah. Ferrari Good in the center. Right. Well, we have some Kill Bill. We could wait. We could show that at the end. Um, but we have some a Kill Bill shoot from there. So for all the guys that want to see some really cool that was action, neat stuff done in a studio, we'll we'll close with that. Um, anyway, we'll go back to shoot. But um, yeah, going back to what you were saying. It's interesting because it totally you changed my perception and that that's really what I felt like I looked like and I, that confidence that you bring out that's in me. Beautiful. What were some of your top posing tips? Um, people need to learn to direct not pose and people need to learn how to create body language with posing so in order to believe a pose you essentially need to um, teach people how to direct hands and movement through the body and not just the expression once you can once you can do that I mean models do that naturally but real people do not move well they do not laugh candidly they do not um, you know know what they're doing so it's as long as you can create that body language learning to touch the body instead of trying to pose and position it makes a big difference and then how what are some tips on creating that motion like what are what are some things you used to tell your models chin forward and down is something that um, I always laugh about as being the best advice that I could give anybody is to bring the chin away from the neck and to push the chin forward and down and learning how to use hands to touch but mostly um, the same applies I work with mirror me so I pose they pose so I show them they mirror me and so it's one of the best ways to pose and direct so you're not saying, okay, move your right arm back. Because then people are like, my right, your right. Yeah, no. It's You just say, mimic me, and then they yeah. do it. So it's a lot less talking yeah, in just that sense. Me. That was the thing that I found. She, and it was great because at the very beginning, she said she just said to me, 
I'm going to say chin forward and down the entire shoot. You're going to hear me say it over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And it was, it kind of, I think if you hadn't said that, it would have gotten annoying mm -hmm. and I would have felt like I wasn't doing something yeah. right. But because she pre-warned me that that was something she was going to remind me of and that was to be it, expected. And it is the secret to the operation. It is. Chin forward and down and <laughs> relax your mouth. Everyone, everyone always asks me, like when they see photos of me, you're like, why do you always look thinner on the photo uh, than you do in real life? And I was like, I dated someone a long time ago that taught me just to pull my chin forward and would be there. <laughs> it was like, you know, it's just, but you can always see me right before someone takes a photo, you can see my head just kind of cocked yeah, forward. Yeah, Yeah, you know, just and, and anybody who's had that, you know. It's, so on America's Next Top Model, um, top model Tyra Banks calls it the turtle. Oh, the turtle. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Wait. So there's names. So the photographers need to be doing this in the mirror. Yes. They need to turtle, be turtling in the mirror. They need to be pushing their chin forward and down and everybody. Lean bodies, curvy bodies, everyone. Chin forward and down. It always looks better. It does. We had a... We had because a, also, when you're to camera, um, your face is... When your face is up and your eyes are small and you have no definition in your chin, when your chin comes forward and down, you not only get perfect definition in your face, you get nice, big, wide open eyes. Oh, yeah, that's true. Mm. One thing I thought was interesting is I always hear a lot of emphasis from photographers on for beauty shots to shoot down versus no, and, and I shoot up and yeah. you shoot up mm. can you explain why um the fashion models are five foot ten and maybe uh, 90 pounds so um you can shoot them on any angle and they look fantastic so i shoot below the eye line so you can always see me slightly below the eye line in every image um and the difference is is everybody thinks shooting down is slimming, but I shoot, I get my position lower than the eye and get them to work their body forward and down. So um, it's a more fashion angle. So I shoot on a fashion angle, even though I have, you know, usually um, bodies that don't look like models, although you look like a model. I do after you. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. So we had a viewer question that I'm going to just throw out there. Yeah. Um, how was Catherine? Was she easy or difficult model to shoot? <laughs> uh, she was very easy to shoot. Um, she was a little difficult at the before shot. <laughs> oh, no. She was like, I'm not doing this. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you are. And I was like, yeah. oh, no, but I get to see it first. No, no, you're not. Yeah, no. She, she didn't give me much. No, she was really, you were really easy to shoot, yeah. Definitely. What makes someone easy and what makes someone hard and how do you work through someone that's difficult? Trust. Trust me. Just trust that I can see it and that I know what I'm doing. And if they can't trust you, if they just can't let go of that idea that it doesn't feel right, it's not meant to feel right on your side, it's meant to look right on mine, you really have to trust that I can see it. And if they can't trust me, then I just say, look, when you look at them, if you don't like them, you can throw them away and you don't have to buy them and nobody will see them but us. So then they relax a little bit more and say, oh, okay, nobody's going to see them. So, yeah. um, And then I photographed a, a girl recently and she said something to me that nobody has ever said to me before. She said, my greatest fear is that I would feel incredible and beautiful and then I would look at the photographs and go, oh, no, they're horrible. And not they would not look like how I felt when I was with you that day. Mm -hmm. And I thought that's interesting, so... I've just got to keep asking for what it is that I can see and keep telling you that I can see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and you were you were very trusting. You just let me do what I needed to do. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was easy. Yeah. Oh. Your portfolio speaks for itself. Okay, what about people that don't have the portfolio and so it's... Cause it, I look at your work and it's kind of a no-brainer. Like, of course, I'm going to trust yeah. you. But what about new photographers that may, A, not have the confidence to project that trust, you know, um, and then don't have the work? But I, I only needed to show you two good shoots. Okay. Yeah. And for in order to get you to trust me, really, I only needed to show you two good That's shoots. That's true. And a before and after that blew you away. So, so what would you do if you didn't have a portfolio at all? Test shoots. To do test test shoots, yeah. which goes back to what we're talking or, about. Or enough shoots yep. until you get two Freebies. shoots that are good. You need yeah. two oh, shoots right. that yeah, are good. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because a lot of that does come from that, you know, yes. you, especially with this kind of stuff. You need to see their work. And you also have to do it. I mean, yeah. the thing is, is that you know, yes. how do you know? It's not only the test shoots just to prove that it's you can do it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's the yeah. doing it so that you can do it because yeah. you're gonna, you you know, it's just the map is so different from the territory. And the biggest mistake everybody makes, and I've seen it time and time again, um, particularly here 
is um, maybe in New Zealand and Australia it doesn't kind of fly, but um, they get girls from Model Mayhem and girls that are model types, and they show those. It's You must show real women. Yeah, yeah. You can't show models. You must show curvy girls. I mean, they can be pretty and beautiful, sure, but I can tell the difference between a real woman and a model and in, in you know, 0.5 seconds. So your target market need to identify with who it is that you're trying to attract. So if they don't identify with it, then they don't, you won't get them. If you put really modely, perfect bodies, you show in boudoir and it's just long legs and then your client's going to look at you and say, I can't achieve that. And yeah. they won't come to you. Well, that's actually, you were just, at the beginning of the show, you were discussing the importance of before and afters. Yeah. And me. can you elaborate on how that connects? I never wanted to show before and afters on my website, but I got hundreds of requests to say, can we see more before and afters? And then when I started to do shows, like to promote my business, I would go to expos. Um, I, I tried hiring the big visual plasma display and nobody stops and watches it. But if I put five albums on a table of before and afters, I had a line of people wanting to touch and just look at the before and afters. And I think as a society, we are captivated by the transformation of going from zero to hero. We love that story. And for some reason, women identify not with the girl on the right, but the girl on the left. Yeah, that's true. And yet, Secretly, they know that they could probably look as good, if not better, than the girl on the right. So it's a weird um, juxtaposition of, yeah, it's crazy. Well, I think I'd also, she mentioned earlier, it, it, it makes it attainable. Yeah. So you see it, like, for example, if I didn't see all the fours and I saw all these afters, like, I would think, oh, they, these all these are all just beautiful women. Da, da, da. Like, everyone's beautiful, obviously, in their own way. Like, but, I love this one. Um, this girl never wears her hair down. So she wears her hair in a ponytail, you know, every day. And, uh, yeah. It's a, it's so in her house, people are going to go, who is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, she's just a sporty chick, doesn't wear a lot of makeup. and But she just, yeah, was so incredible. She also collects all this vintage lingerie that she doesn't ever wear out or anything like that. So her shoot was just magnificent. So, you know, and she, she's... Um, 40 and she's just got this beautiful folio. It was such a cool shoe. That's great. Well, we have lots of tips and gear and other items to yeah. go through. So we'll take a little break and then we'll resume. We'd also like to thank, uh, of course, Netflix. Now, this one's easy. I mean, yeah. the, the uh, you know, Netflix uh, is uh, something that I have interaction with almost every day. <laughs> so, I, 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 so I, I'm embarrassed to say yes. I agree. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the, the um, you know, the uh, uh, with Netflix, of course, you, whether it's your Android phone, your, your laptop, your iPad, your iPhone, your computer, your Roku, your Apple TV, no matter where you are, once you have that subscription, once you build that queue, it's something that is just, you can uh, have instant access to all of that. Now, evidently, they, they've gone back and forth about actually sending you DVDs. Well, almost all of us started by getting DVDs from Netflix. You know, you can subscribe and get um, up to eight. Uh, DVDs, which you really have to be committed to watching a lot of yeah, movies. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, uh, uh, but one or two is fine. Uh, I have to admit, I have not had a DVD mailed to me in years. I think it's still sitting on my subscription. Yeah. But I, but you know, all I do is use the Instant Play. So I mean, the um, so and you can also, of course, use it on your Xbox 360, your PS3, oh. your Nintendo Wii. I mean, just about any device that you're using. You know that most of us, on, in, on average, are using. You can get Netflix on, um, and of course, you can watch movies, TV shows. There's a lot of things that people aren't watching TV anymore. Well, I have to admit that that uh, with Netflix, it makes it pretty easy to skip TV altogether. With with Twit Network, I mean, why yeah. do you got to go on television? Exactly. I mean, you have, you have great you have great <laughs> podcasts. So when you're not watching tech shows, you've got your movies. And and I have to admit, a lot of times, I'm just waiting for things. If things for if for some reason it's not on Netflix, I'm just, just going to wait. Wait for it. Shows up. Mm -hmm. shows up yeah, that's Netflix. how I do it. I actually root against movies now because I'm like mm. the the worse this movie does in the box office, the faster I'm going to get to get oh, it on Netflix. No. And so that's hilarious. and uh, and you know, but Netflix it just you know it's constantly here. Here you got Breaking Bad seasons one through three. Um, that you can just yeah, Leo keeps telling me I have to watch that. I, I haven't watched it yet. Well, now that there's three seasons on, on a Breaking Bad, I got through Dexter, and now there's three oh, seasons I of, of, of Dexter. Yeah, I'm, I'm caught up now, and uh, and now I'm I'm uh, there's yeah, and, and Dexter uh, rocks. Oh, Dexter is so great. Anyway, so um, but the uh, but getting Breaking Bad. 
getting Breaking Bad is just, you know, that's another example of something. Now you can watch the whole episode, you know, uh, all the episodes one after the other for a very, very low monthly rate. So it's definitely the way to go. Sue, so, favorite movie? Old time favorite? All time favorite. Oh, that's a big Or favorite one. recent. I've actually been captivated by this. <laughs> the Walking Dead? Ah, oh, I watched, I bought the series when I got to New York and I watched the entire series in 24 hours. Oh my god! And I get to see the first episode before I go back to Australia next week. I get to see it. Mm, very cool. I have to see it. I haven't, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen that one. Oh, oh, it's fantastic. What's so great about it? I love zombies. So. Yeah, the it's zombies. zombies. Yeah, well, and, and I, you know, it, it's, for me, it's great when you're trying to figure out. A lot of us, you know, a lot. If you're a parent, by the way, there are tons of kids. Oh, yeah. oh, you know, whether it's um, you know, and, and all of you parents will understand these Caillou. Um, you know, you know, Caillou is like a, a big, big, you know, uh, Dora the Explorer. These yes. are all very important. They're all yeah. on Netflix. It's wow. very, very important uh, when you're trying to keep the kids at bay. So um, anyway, if you, you can cancel this anytime. You can set it up. It's just it's 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 really really easy. If you want to get a 30 day free trial, go to Netflix.com/slash/twit. Uh, and uh, and then you can get a free trial, thirty days. Give it a shot. Wow. Uh, look, you know, try it on your different devices. It it it, it really is uh, an amazing service. There's Caillou right there. Um, my the, there's about a time between there about one and a half and and two and a half is the time when I'm just obsessed with this this wow. uh, the show. Uh, again, Netflix.com/slash/twit, and we thank next Netflix for their support of the Twit Network. Very cool. Yeah, perfect. So we're gonna launch right into your tips. Cool. Um, so we've already talked about the first one, which is showing before and afters. Yes. So you don't need to do that. Um, but number one tip, show before and afters. Um, number two, learn how to pose real women. Yes. So when I created a posing manual, because um, photographers were asking me to teach them, um, the one thing that they keep saying to me was, we want real curves. Like we want. Um, I don't use the term plus size. Uh, that term needs to be removed from all vocabulary. It's offensive. And um, I just say curvy girls. So mm -hmm. uh, I photograph real women, girls with curves, and you just need to learn the rules. That's a perfect example of chin forward and down. Kate is actually my curvy model in Sydney. She's just got the most fantastic body and she lets me take the most horrible photographs of her <laughs> and and then shows, you know, can show people how beautiful she is and, and she's so wonderful. She's also a photographer, a wedding photographer. So, um, you know, she's got great curves and, and people don't photograph them well. The woman is booking the portrait, the woman is booking the wedding. If you can nail this as a photographer, um, she's buying as well. She's your consumer. Um, she just wants to look good. I've never had a client in 20 years come to me and say, please make me look wider. Um, you know, they all want to look fabulous and, you know, a little bit slimmer and younger. There's no Photoshop on that image. That's all about placement, taking the weight on the back foot, leading with the shoulder, bringing the chin forward and down and using the body um, to show beautiful curves. So. Um, I am doing more and more product for posing curves because I, it's my biggest request right now. I was about to yeah. ask, so where yeah. can we get this? And yeah, how well, can not we? yet. I'm, I've got to, I'm going back to um, edit more video. I've been shooting, I've been videoing myself shooting Kate in lots of different positions and, and outfits and um, people just want more and more curves. So I've got curvier girls lined up that have put up their hand that said, I want to be a curvy girl. And because um, it's easy to find curvy girls, but they don't want to be shown in the bad light, the, the way other people shoot them. So I have to find girls that are okay with taking the bad shot as well. Yeah, like the before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and so, oh, go ahead. Learning to do simple things like this um, without Photoshop will save you hours and hours and hours and sell you more portraits. So, um, what were you telling her here? Uh, we're creating what I call faux waste, so like faux fur, not real fur. Mm -hmm. It's not a real waste. We're creating, we're creating the illusion of a smaller waist and pushing that chin forward, connecting the shoulder. Um, we covered up the arms, not to hide them, but because they were too white, you know. Um, she's so um, beautiful skin and got that sort of contrast of white skin and black hair. And um, we wanted to take the focus into that waist point. 
Um, none of these images have been photoshopped by any stretch of the imagination. Um, Can you go back to the first one, Alex? Can you yeah. tell me what you told her? Um, she's got all of her weight on her back foot with her bum pushed away from me and then back to the wall. So she's got an arch into her back. She's holding her elbows with her elbow towards me to take the weight um, from the breast line to the front arm, which can make the front arm look wide. She's driving her chin forward. She's 45 degrees from the camera. So she's really working that position. It's a hard position to hold. It actually hurts. It's like a Pilates workout. She looks workout. comfortable, but yeah. Yeah, and um, it's so easy to achieve. The left one, she's just standing normally, just standing up, waiting for my direction. So to shift the weight onto the back foot, huge difference. Do you warn models that this is, or real women models, that this is going to be uncomfortable? Um, well, I don't shoot models, so I mean, my clients, women, sorry. Yeah. Oh, my clients, I always tell them it's like beauty is pain, it's like wearing stilettos. They hurt, but they look fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they, uh, they'll ring me the next day and tell me they have sore muscles. From yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's interesting, this goes back to, we had Arnie Freytag, the, um, like the number one Playboy photographer on. And that was one of the things he said, is the Playboy is, so, it's so convoluted, you're getting yes. so many angles and pushing things. And and the women, the girls are just like, this can't look good while they're doing it. Yeah. But they see the images and it, it just looks natural. Looks weird. Yeah. yeah it feels weird, looks great. So. <laughs> um, I find the next one to be really interesting because I would have never thought this would be one of your tips. Oh, well, don't I actually, use, yeah, yeah. Um, no more liquefy. Don't use liquefy. Ever again. Ever, ever, ever again. Don't touch it. One of the questions from our viewers was how much liquefy are you using? Yeah, I don't Zero. use liquefy. Yeah, I've never, never used it actually. Um, I don't like it. Um, Why don't you like it? Um, I don't like how long it takes to load once you, once you it. <laughs> but one of the things, um, the, the warp tool, so to lasso, and I, I have done an example of this on my blog, so you can go and have a look if you don't believe me how incredible this is. Photoshop has a tool called Free Transform. When you right click in Free Transform on a lassoed layer, um, you can go down to warp and you get this beautiful grid which you can pick up and move in any angle. For contouring bodies, it is the fastest, most effective, incredible tool I have ever seen used. It, it, is, um, it is how I do any contouring. Use it, use it responsibly. <laughs> Seriously, you can you can really go overboard here. You do not need to. You must use this responsibly. Yeah. Well, and people are are, are are I think some people will get horrified by the fact that you're you know using all, doing all yes. this warping. But this is what you're seeing in all the magazines. Yes, but this, this is no. But I'm saying, I'm saying, but this is this is the average person right. getting the same tools that yeah. that 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 we're seeing all the time on on the front of every single magazine. None of those people look that way when they. Take no, the and and also you're just talking about taking a little pinch in the back of an arm or mm -hmm. taking a little line through the waist or mm -hmm. you know I mean you can dramatically alter an image with these tools but you don't have to you can take in a double chin you can you can even lift up an eyelid that is half closed if one eyelid's coming down you can do so many great things with this tool and it, it yeah People are always going to say it's wrong to lose that integrity, but the truth is, is that it's an embellishment. It's not well, a lie. Not, no, much, not much different than makeup. It's digital makeup. You're right. I just tell my clients too that the camera there's distortion, and a lot of times yeah. I'm, I'm literally just fixing that distortion. Or there may be like, like I'm thin, but if my arms pressed against my body, it's going to look wide. It, yeah. And so I want to I want to get it back to the way I perceive also, myself. Also, often long lean girls have no waist that goes in they can be straight up and down yeah so really all they want is curves as well so you can pinch their waistline in to give them curves yeah yeah and the camera's cruel one yeah. bad angle right. and if you have um curves or not one bad angle and you can make somebody very lean look very wide yeah, it's quite well, easy. and it's lens choices too, Fair enough. which I would love to lead into what your um, choice lens is. But before I do, I had an ass another assumption. See, working with Sue is like basically like a break of all my assumptions. Um, I thought eighty-five one two would be like your your yeah. baby lens, but it isn't. No. And why? And what do you use? I actually shoot on the twenty-four one hundred five. 
So it's an L series lens, zoom lens, obviously. Um, because I'm in close quarters, I will shoot this far away from you. So I'm usually within a meter and a half from my subject. And do you like the distortion of the lens or do you do it because you like both being this close? Yeah, I like the close quarters. I like the distortion. I like the wide. I like the range. Um, and I'll shoot right through the range. But mostly what I really love about it is that I can lie down on the floor in close proximity to my client and take five different compositions without moving just by zooming in and out. So my only other lens is the 50mm uh, 1.0. So um, I have that mostly for video. Like I love that lens for shooting portrait, but it is an, an amazing video lens. So 1.0. Oh yes, yeah, the fifty mil. Yeah. She has. There's that only there's only two of them in Australia. Now, are you shooting? Are you shooting the video actually at one point oh, or no, is it just I, that it's sharper at, yeah. a, at a wider range? Well, it's an incredible lens. Um, but I actually shot a, a video for the Fusion Awards this mm -hmm. year, and I shot the entire thing at one point two. No, it's because yeah. it, you're you not quite. You shot the entire as, thing at one point two. Yeah, the video. Wow. Yeah. Mm, that's beautiful. I love it. I mean, and, and, and how close were you? Because it seems like once once we get this distance away, it would be you'd have like an eighth of an inch of, of depth of field, right? Yeah, I mean. the story, it's on YouTube. Um, okay. It's Sue Bry's Fusion. Yeah. Um, that it's, I entered it into the Fusion Awards and it won gold. I shot it at 1.2 because it's the story of a guy making an 8x10 camera. So it's not so much a shoot. Right. You know, I, I can't shoot clients at 1.2 or 1.0 because you know one breathe in and yeah you've I was lost gonna say how, yeah. you, how would you and do I, that? I very rarely would go under 2.8 when I'm shooting because I just don't have I move too much you're moving a lot I talk, and the clients are moving and a I'm hand yeah. holding that big camera so the 1D so, with the 50 mil lens on it is about two and a half it's about five pounds and it's so it's heavy enough you know movement so what what lens were you so using with me the most time uh, the 24 105 and the 50. Mm -hmm. Great. And then the last little piece of gear item that might surprise people, that super cheap reflector. Oh, yes. So there's a, um, there's a reflector on there. Polystyrene or styrofoam, you call it. We call it polystyrene. Um, everything I shoot has two big, there it is, two big polystyrene um, reflectors on either side. So my studio has about eight of those. Um, it's really amazing. They're like walls. They use them in film. They're called bead wall. Um, and it's just like a firm grade polystyrene. That it, they're the best reflectors $15 can mm -hmm. buy. And um, another thing it does is it puts a wall around my clients so they feel safe. So they can be in a really big shooting space or a big studio and be surrounded by reflectors. And they feel really confined and, and really safe. and. Yeah, it's, um, I have them everywhere I go. I wish I could travel with them, but it's the only thing you can't do is pack them down and put them in your suitcase. There you go. And you're, and you're going to be doing a master class? Yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow. So if you're watching live, if, if you're not yeah. watching live, you're going to be able to move back quickly. So <laughs> this is, uh, and where is it? At San Francisco. Okay, so um, if, yeah, this, we've still got um, a place left. Uh, yeah. So if somebody wants to join us, they'll have Someone to email us to tomorrow. tomorrow. There's, this is, I don't know if she'll ever be back to San Francisco. It would yeah. surprise me for a workshop. And I'm going to be there yeah. both Excellent. days. Great. So, it's awesome. So it's a I'm day. super excited. Very good. To learn good. a ton. Mm. Thank you so much, Sue. Yeah, and yes. Sue, so you can, obviously her blog is a huge resource. That's, you can that's find in, her. in the bed with Sue. In, in bed, bed with Sue. Sue. In bed with Sue. Yeah, in, in the bed. bed. In, in bed with Sue. I love the name of that, by the way. And it, otherwise it's suebrice.com for yes. your actual photography. Yes, no, but in bed with Sue.com is um, the, the best resource for photographers to okay. connect with me. Photographers, awesome. Yeah. And then they can find you on Twitter. Yes, Sue underscore Bryce. Very good. Very great. Very good. Thanks, Sue. Um, thank you so yeah, much. More pleasure. than anything, coming on the show, but more than anything, shooting me. My pleasure. We'll treasure those photographs forever. She said something to me during the shoot that I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna steal. It was so good. What did you say? Repeat offenders. Oh yeah, I have a lot of repeat offenders. She says, I have a lot of repeat offenders after the shoot. <laughs> and I was like, uh huh. And then I got home, like, when are we gonna do another shoot? Next time I'm gonna go like this and yeah. wear this outfit. I'm gonna do this. And who's gonna do my hair? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a yeah. good business model. Yeah, get people I've coming back. I photographed some girls five or six times. Yeah, yeah. you just do one addictive. of those tours. Yeah, she's addictive. Come, she's coming to San Francisco, Same and everyone people. just lines up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. That's yeah. true. Absolutely. Um, so let's wrap it up with showing that Kill Bill shoot from right. Island Event Studio. Um, 
Sorry, I had it up, and then it's I. It's all uh, good. Oh no, I might have closed it. Well, anyway, so Philippe, um, the owner of the studio, this is his shoot. Uh, incredible photographer, and um, very cool guy, generous guy. Any I'm last, so any last thoughts for reviewer? Any, any kind of like seal a deal tip to bring it home? Um, I think the beauty industry and the glamour industry is a multi-billion dollar industry and uh, there aren't enough photographers tapping into the market that I tapped into. And, so. and it's right there in front of you. It's what all women want is to, is to look and feel beautiful. And the sooner you can include it somehow into your brand, um, the sooner you can make money from it. Yeah. Male or female? Um, photographer. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Sue. Yeah, no, thank you. And uh, and thank you, Catherine. Thank for, you, Alex. And thank all of you for watching. Leo's oh my gosh. Back next week. Oh yeah, and then Alex, thanks so much so much for co-hosting. Yeah, my pleasure. My stepping pleasure. in for Leo, and I always enjoyed. Being I'm here. sure most of our viewers know about your podcast. However, just in case they don't. Just to make everything really confusing, there's tweet yeah. photo, and then there's this, this weekend, weekend photo, photo, and this yeah. week, thisweekendphoto.com. You can go up to check that out. Yeah, and, it's a great uh, resource, yeah. awesome interviews, and a very good compliment to what we're doing here. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a bunch photo. of photographers. Yeah, talking. so. so definitely check it out. Cool. And uh, and once again, thank all of you for watching. Uh, this is Twit Photo.